the new ASCAP sensitive radio telescope that's been observing the Milky Way's satellite galaxy, the Large Magellanic Cloud, has detected thousands of new signals from space, and they're all coming from hitherto unknown sources. For the first time ever, scientists have captured radio signals that can help us understand the evolution of galaxies and the origin of stars. But it's often very difficult to decode these signals and understand their nature, especially when we suddenly hear ear-shredding screams coming from the depths of space, such as this. Today we know what stars are made of, what makes a red dwarf different from a blue dwarf, and what happens after the death of a star. But as of now, astronomers still don't know precisely how stars are created, even though stars make up about 90% of all visible matter in the galaxy. In this video, you'll find out what makes those sinister sounds, why were scientists so delighted to find hydrogen in interstellar space, what does champagne have to do with space? And just how are stars born? To find out where stars come from, we have to understand from what matter they're formed. In the 1930s, scientists believed that new stars were no longer born in our universe. The thing is, star formation requires hydrogen, and the astronomers of that time failed to find it in outer space. Accordingly, they figured that all stars were formed almost simultaneously just after the Big Bang. They thought that when the last star winked out, it would be the end of the universe. That's all, folks. But in the 1950s, astronomers discovered that stars differ from both our sun and one another. They have different luminosities, different temperatures, different sizes, and most importantly, different masses. About 11 billion years will have transpired between our sun's formation and its death. But the lifespan of massive stars is far shorter. And because of this, since we can see massive stars today, we know that they were formed later than our sun. And they are still forming. In 1951, three independent groups of scientists finally managed to capture a special signal. Using radio telescopes, they managed to detect hydrogen emission. It turned out it didn't just exist in the interstellar medium. In fact, it's so abundant that new stars can be created regularly. For example, from such molecular clouds. These clouds are composed of hydrogen, helium, a small percentage of heavier elements, and dust. That's where the protostars are formed. But we can't witness this process. The thing is, hydrogen is almost impossible to detect in space because of its faint emission profile, lacking features in the visible spectrum. And dust particles in a molecular cloud actively absorb and dissipate that emission. It's like trying to discern objects in a thick fog. That's why scientists were unable to find hydrogen in interstellar space for so long. But how in the world does this hydrogen get turned into a star? Scientists don't have a definite answer to this question yet, but they do have two very good ideas as to how this might happen. And the first one is called the Champagne Flow Model. According to this model, a molecular cloud plays the role of the bottle. Inside such a bottle, there's a struggle between two forces, compression and expansion. The compression occurs due to the cloud's own gravity and some external forces, and the expansion is due to gas pressure. Over time, the cloud begins to cool. It's not heated from the outside, and the radiative emission taking place inside dissipates quite quickly. When the temperature in the densest part drops to absolute zero, minus 270 degrees Celsius, the gas pressure drops and it starts getting compressed. As a result, a star or an entire star cluster is formed. The new stars further heat up the gas inside the cloud. 
the pressure increases and the gas flow, along with the young star, bursts out just like champagne comes out of a bottle. Look at this photo. The bright area at the center is a cluster of stars and hot gas, which must have burst out of the nebula and is traveling in space at a speed of 10 kilometers per second. By the way, this cluster is heading towards our solar system. But don't worry, they won't get to us. The distance from the Earth to the Ara constellation in which these stars are located is about 4,000 light years. If this star birth hypothesis is confirmed, scientists will probably receive a signal just like this one. The second theory of star formation is related to black holes. In 2017, a group of scientists was observing two colliding galaxies using the VLT, or Very Large Telescope, at an observatory in Chile. And yeah, that's really what it's called. That's the coolest name ever! Supermassive black holes at the centers of galaxies suck in surrounding matter. It gets heated up on its way in, with some of it being ejected at the poles in the form of uber powerful streams of cosmic wind made of gas particles. For the first time, scientists detected the twinkling of young stars in these streams, and they're less than several tens of millions of years old. By the standard of stars, they're just babies. The supermassive black hole generating these jets of hot gas in which some young stars were found is 600,000 light years away. But where else can we observe the formation of new stars? The Australian ASCAP telescope, which recently captured those thousands of new signals for scientists, was observing the Large Magellanic Cloud. It's the largest satellite galaxy orbiting the Milky Way. But more importantly, it's located on the picture plane. This means we can see not its cross-section, but can kind of sort of observe the galaxy from above. And the Large Magellanic Cloud is home to one of the brightest star-forming regions we found so far, the Tarantula Nebula. At the center of the nebula is the R136 cluster, a bundle of young stars no older than 2 million years of age. In comparison, our Sun is 4.6 billion years old. Perhaps, amidst the thousand signals detected by the ASCAP telescope, scientists will find newborn stars' radiation. But the Tarantula Nebula is 160,000 light years away. Can we observe star formation anywhere closer? Let's see. This is W51, one of the largest star factories in the entire Milky Way and it's just 17,000 light years away. That's almost 10 times closer than the Tarantula Nebula. Let's move on. The Eagle Nebula, which is home to an awe-inspiring, active star-forming region called the Pillars of Creation. These unusual formations are composed of hydrogen and dust, and the dark areas we can see on them are protostars. The Eagle Nebula is even closer, only 5,700 light years away from Earth. But that's not all. The Orion Nebula is one of the brightest objects in deep space. And this star-forming region, the closest to us, is only 1,344 light years away. Can we explore these areas now? Theoretically, yes, we can. For example, using the Australian ASCAP telescope. The telescope consists of 36 antennas with a total area of 4,000 square meters. It will allow scientists to see not only nascent stars, but also thousands of other space objects. For example, planetary nebulae that remain after the deaths of stars similar to our Sun. The ASCAP telescope is part of the EMU project, the Evolutionary Map of the Universe, which will commence at the beginning of 2022. The project aims to allow scientists, as well as us, 
to learn more about the evolution of stars and galaxies. Exploring various corners of the universe will help us understand how our own sun was formed, and also to find out what will happen when it reaches the end of its days. Guys. Guys. In addition to the ASCAP telescope, the EMU project is planning to use the SKA antenna array. It's being collectively built by 20 countries on the territory of Australia and South Africa. This radio telescope will be 50 times more sensitive and will be able to work 10,000 times faster than any other currently existing telescope. Just imagine how many signals we'll be able to pick up from different parts of the universe. It looks like pretty soon, instead of new riddle releases, we'll all be listening to new stars from somewhere in the Orion constellation or meditating to the sounds of star clusters escaping molecular clouds. Whatever it is, I hope it sounds better than the Helix Nebula. Yeah, that's what was screaming its head off all this time. So, write in the comments the sounds of the galaxy, star, or nebula you'd like to listen to. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Until next time.